And welcome back to Sports Check this Monday morning. My name is Daniel Wahome. It is day one, keeping up with lots of stories. And one of the stories that we are keeping up with is what's happening at the Kenya Film Classification Board, where comedian Eric, um, uh, um, where comedian Eric Moni is just trying to get himself um, get himself out of trouble with some filming that he had done. It was considered indecent exposure, was taken to court, and he's trying to look for an out-of-court settlement with that. That's one of the stories we are keeping up with. We'll be getting into a conversation about age-grade sport in a short while with Nicky Manthi of a Total Sport. But at the bottom right of your screen is our sign language interpreter, Susan Thuku. And what's happening at the moment we know that schools will be closing towards uh starting at the end of this week and those who will be in back in schools will mainly be those who are kcse and kcp candidates so the children will be at home and the young people are heavily involved in physical activities but with the restrictions on gatherings not so much sporting uh coaching and mentoring can happen so easily but how do you do this and with changing times the use of applications have become there we can actually say that we are doing our one year anniversary of conversations on skype zoom blue jeans or anything and also managing everything through online applications nick Manthi of atoto sport is here with us and a very good morning to you nick a good morning well, man. And Nick, let's start with the whole concept of engaging the youth in sport today. And I look at sport basically as a global economic sector. And I think in 2015, it was said to be worth about $450 billion annually. How much needs to be done to make sure that our youngsters tap into this, what's looking like an endless revenue stream? Yeah, I, I think, uh, Wahome, you are right about that. Eh? We need to focus on uh, developing more uh, more and more players, the podium-ready players. Because uh, for you to tap in into that uh, money that's worthy, uh, you need to develop players that are worthy, uh, podium-ready, that are ready to compete for that amount that you just mentioned. So uh, as a country, I think our focus should be are we developing competitive players? Because uh, for you to, comp uh, to invest in uh, developing competitive players, are you investing in giving the coaches the right skills? Because that's the question that we should be asking. Because for you to develop that player that will be competitive in Europe, you need to first invest in a coach who is going to develop that player. That's what we thought. And uh, that's why we, here we're talking about the super coach up that we think is a modern way of uh, developing players. Because one thing about the hub that we're introducing, it's because uh, different head categories have different way of training. So a five-year-old eh, has a way of training that's different from a seven-year-old. So I want to get actually into that yeah. and uh, later about you know the use of technology in when it comes to record keeping, monitoring, evaluation, and also you know, developing an, a profile of an athlete. Let's start with age grade coaching. And for Atotos, think of football, think of athlet uh, athletics comes naturally. If you can run fast, no one will teach you how to run fast. They can only teach you how to effectively run fast. But think of a sport like football or volleyball. What's it that you would want from, say, a five-year-old? Or how would you approach a five-year-old that's different from a seven-year-old, that's different from a 13-year-old? Okay, so Wame, uh, one of the things our, our core business we do at Atoto Sports is uh, we represent players, Kenyan players in Europe. So one of the challenges that we faced the past few years is because uh, our players here lack basic. So that means there's something they missed during their childhood when uh -huh. it comes to development. That is in terms of the sport? The, in terms of the sport. That means uh, they, in their development, the, let's say talk about football. We, one of our clients is uh, Eric Marcelo Homa. Yes. Currently, is one of the biggest clubs in, in Sweden, AIK. But uh, two years ago, we, had, we were forced to uh, maybe uh, start him from a lower division. And th at the set, th that time, he was playing under the national team. So that shows you the kind of players that we have in the national team. So uh, a player is moving direct from the national team, going to a lower division in Sweden eh, because he's lacking some basics. So, uh, to do that, eh, uh, we need to 
focus more on making sure that players get the right training. Going back to your question, a five-year-old is trained different from a seven-year-old. Because a five-year-old, what we need to focus is he cares about him and his friends and the ball. So as a coach, you need to understand how are you going to help that pl uh, player develop. Because from the age of five, what he cares about is the ball, my friends, and me. At seven, you need to start focusing him now. Okay, this ball, you can play with your friends. From the age of nine, now start introducing the aspect of teamwork. At the age of 13, now start introducing the aspect of systems. That's why uh, in Europe, most players start playing pro from the age of 15, 16. Because they have three years from 13 years to now start uh, dealing with about, about system and all that. So as a, as a country, we need to focus more on uh, young players and developing it the right way. And it brings in an aspect now. For example, we saw the Football Kenya Federation uh, some years back trying to introduce an under-13 league and, and also an under-15 league. We've, got, we've had people who've been homeschooled at a, what's supposed to be a center of excellence. The question then comes in, how do you work with federations to ensure that there is a standard format? And I'll use an example. In the Netherlands, whatever happens, at the end of it all, a footballer knows it's 4-3-3. In England, there is a, a system they will take. In France, in Italy, in Germany, everything's the same. What about a country like Kenya? So that um, something called a, football, a national football philosophy is developed. Yeah, I think that now goes back to the federation because now we need to develop our, way, our own way of, of playing eh? such that it's something that can be rolled down even to, uh, to, to, to schools and, uh, and colleges because uh, if we have our own way of training, then it's going to be easier. Because, but that has to start from the federation level whereby we, stay, we say this is our way of playing as Kenya. That way it's going to be easier because uh, we're going to cut uh, across such in, in a way uh, whereby a coach in, uh, in Mandera had the same uh, opportunity as, as a coach in Kenya, that, uh, in Nairobi. In Nairobi. That means, eh? <laughs> well, you know, in Mandera people say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mandera, Kenya. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like in Nairobi, that means a player developed in, uh, in Mandera and a player developed in Nairobi, they wouldn't have a problem in transitioning the national team because we have the same system of play. How much collaboration are you doing with the federation, with the, for example, Football Kenya Federation? Because in this case, you are an agent of a national team player. Yeah, we are very good. Uh, we actually signed an MOU for this app. Uh, so uh, FKF currently, they are supporting us in this. So we really need out with their blessings. So we rather have an ag agreement because uh, soon uh, we're going to take a 16-year-old Kenya uh, player from the uh, under-17 team to Sweden for, for trials uh, and that player was uh, discovered through the, 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 the center of excellence. That's why we discovered the player. Very good talented 16 year old because that shows if uh, we have more of those center of excellence that means the talent is there. So a 16 year old is joining a senior team in Sweden. That means eh, the potential is there. We just need to focus more on developing more young players. And now, you've mentioned about, for example, now, you had the case of Marcelo Uma going to play in the lower divisions. Definitely, the club that's interested in his 16-year-old, they may not take him in the top division, but may loan him out in the lower divisions. What are the specific things that are demanded of players who want to travel, I mean, who want to go and play their football in Europe so that they understand, one, about the football, and number two, how do you prepare them for the culture shock of cold winters and a foreign language and a strange diet? Yeah, like uh, I'll give an example of now the 16-year-old, eh? because now the 16-year-old, we've been, uh, we've had uh, like a, a month or two trying to prepare him, because uh, we have to get a nutrition coach, we have a, a sports center whereby we help him that we've had to invest in machines that uh, are probably the same as the one that he's going to get in Europe, such that once he gets in Europe, he won't be shocked. So we are trying to prepare him for at least two or three months in our in a center. We have a, we, we have a sports center. In, in Kilimani, where we prepare our players. So, so that probably, once they travel to Europe, they won't be shocked that much. Yeah. So now, something else is with the restrictions on gatherings. And that means one of the things that happened is that sport was affected. And the guidelines from 
the State Department for Sport are specific. It's top uh, top tier leagues that are there. If it come, if we are talking about schools, sporting activities, or anything that may result to crowding, are still under restrictions. Uh, that's from the Minister of Education. Then, how do you continually have these athletes active at these times? How are you monitoring them from wherever you are? Uh, especially when it comes to our athletes that are in our agency, we usually give them program, a, a, a personal program, whereby you can always train alone, and which you submit in, in the hub, and everything is usually like an online uh, uh, communication. So then uh, we always have an evaluation if you are following you up to make sure that uh, you remain in competitive, because you never know. Any time a chance could come, you need to be ready. Let's talk about the application now and how you distribute these training programs. COVID times have changed everything and, you know, the digital shift was fully enforced, I think, by this pan is one of the things that was enforced by this pandemic. Explain to us how this works, how you get the data and how you ensure that whatever is put inside is actually real. Uh, yeah, so... We have a, a super coach up, that, that's how we call it. So it's a program for the entire year. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, let's say you train in a seven year old. So in the, in the, in the, in the application, uh, uh, you just click uh, a team. Once you enroll in our system, we give you uh, logins. So if you're training a seven year old. All right, yeah, you can, yeah, you can yeah. project it towards the camera. Yeah. It's okay. So. Well, uh, these are the, uh, like probably the Nick team, eight years. That, that's the age category. Then uh, you need a training for tomorrow. Uh huh. So, you, need, you need a training for maybe tomorrow. All right, uh, Nick, let me ask uh, my director, Wilson, um, if he can, you know, just help us get a closer look at the application that's there. All right, yeah, you can continue. Yeah, so. On Wednesday, now the hub tells you exactly what to do. So, first it tells you you gather the players, then uh, update them on what you're doing for the day. Just some audios and uh, some writing to explain what you'll be doing. Then uh, once you gather them, eh, it tells you what you're supposed to play, what you're supposed to do. Like, if I can just play one video, all right. Okay. So tell us about that video that is on air now. We can see. Looks like it was shot in Europe. This gathering is a way for us to show the players that the training session is about to get underway. But it's also a chance. So in this uh, video, the coach is trying to explain to the players what the session today will be all about. Uh -huh. Then uh, from there, you go direct to the warm-up. At this age, eh, remember our age category is seven? Yes. Seven years, eh? So they... They are always warmed up at seven. Uh, at seven, <laughs> eh, you need to have a, 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 some sort of warm-up. Eh? excellent playful mm -hmm. exercise to teach players to look up when driving with the ball. Every player drives a ball within the area and they can all catch one another. Aha. Uh -huh. When they are caught, they stand with their ball over their head. Caught players can be freed by... An so that's a way of warming up. Eh? You, you need to put some play as they warm up. They need to enjoy the warming up. Mm -hmm. You don't just need to tell them the whole ways of uh, give me five laps. <laughs> no, you, you need to warm them up as they enjoy. Because uh, as, part of, uh, as, long as, as much as it's, it's playing, eh, we also need to... Uh, they need to enjoy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so they, you, you keep on... The, the hub keeps on telling you what, what you do next, what you what after that, because if you can just play the next uh, exercise. Eh? Here we see the players practicing different ways of driving and turning with the ball. So you sh the players you turn should? with the ball on two separate occasions. So ideally, this is where you try to get uh, the footballers to do that, what is known as the Zinedine Zidane turn. Yeah, so, uh, and this is uh, the age of uh, seven years. So 
you can imagine a kid who is trained on how to turn with the ball from the seven, seven year, years, uh, then is going to compete with another kid uh, from Kenya who probably started playing at the age of 13. So you can see the level of uh, the, the, the competition. Now, here comes another issue that's uh, coming up is if you take players through this, then how do you maintain what people say is the natural beauty of football where you can get inventive or where it's getting a little bit too technical such that if a player gets the ball, it is expected that he has one of three things to do, which is shoot, pass, or hold. Or, I mean, at a situation, and it looks more mechanical rather than have some, something that's, you know, the natural fluidity we've seen with players, you know, like uh, Wilberforce Mulamba, John Momo Rory, you know, the exciting players that we've got. Uh, even globally, when you look players like uh, maybe Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi is, is talented, but even if you are talented, you have to play in that uh, in, in the team set in, in team setup. So it depends with the coach. If you know your player is extremely ex uh, talented, eh, there is a way you can always use him with make sure that he maximizes his, his talent at the same time is playing in a in a team. Is a, is a, like a, in a, like a, is a team, team player. Now, another aspect is, now, we say in, uh, when it comes to technology, if you take an early computer class, they tell you it's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. How do you ensure that the information, the feedback that you get through for, from that application that you've shown us, that here is Wahome, who is a player, I've been given a training program because we can't gather, then I decide that I did 15 push-ups, but I want to record that I did 20. How do you ensure that that system is not abused? Yeah, uh, one, eh? this app we are focusing is for the coach. It's because our, our, we, we thought the main focus this time around, we focus on the coach. We give the coach the skills. Then now the coach now transfers the skills that he has eh, to the players, because uh, one of the things that we really want to push on eh, is trying to commercialize uh, football in Kenya. Mm -hmm. As a coach, once we train you, we tell you that if you have good players, as an agency, we're interested in the good players. That's why we invest in and making sure that we give you the right skill so that you can develop ready players. And we, as a coach or as an academy or as a football club. Eh, once we take a player from your club, that means that's money involved. So we're trying to focus and push the, uh, the, 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 the coaches because if you develop good players, everyone, not even us, clubs will come from Europe saying that this club develops their players so well. Because it's something eh, that uh, even right now, uh, clubs in Europe are asking us, can you give us another player like Eric Marcelo? Because, because of the good work that Marcelo is doing in, in Sweden. And then it brings in then, how much do coaches have to do, to be honest? Because eventually, if they fill in the wrong data and you present it to a club anywhere, even if it's just Simba in Tanzania or Kampala City Council Authority in Uganda, you present the wrong information, the player's performance on the pitch tells a different story, then yeah. you're exposed. Yeah, because then that's so unfortunate. Even us as an agency, it's we, like uh, we always have to protect that. Because right now, especially an, an example like age, uh, you can these days you can't lie. You can't say you, you're 17 year old, then you're 23 year old, because we've improved in terms of technology <coughs> and all that. So even when it comes to treatment, you can uh, you treat it like a 17 year old, then you're a 23 year old. So even when it comes to treatment, probably love any issues. Even a warm up vest, when you put on the warm up vest, it shows your, your, your blood flow and how your heart is pumping. Uh, how a 23 year old is, uh, heart is pumping is different from how a 17 year old heart should be pumping after running maybe 100, 100 meters. So, with technology, you can't lie these days. Wow. So, yeah, so the coaches who decide that they can be clever, sorry, it's not just the MRI scan that you can beat now. 
even the physiology, you know, heartbeats and all that, they're being watched. Something else that we find as a challenge every time we are working with, we want to get the stories from the players, communication and media engagement, as should be to help grow, uh, them grow as a brand, as an agency. What are you doing, you know, with the young pe players that you've got in your stable? Yeah, once we sign a, a players in our agency, we always try to tell them uh, there's life after football. So they need to focus on pushing their brand because uh, what will determine what uh, their life will be, it's how they protect their brand. An example, uh, right now Cristiano Ronaldo is earning more from the brand from what he's earning from playing football. So uh, we always try to push, tell them to, especially in this digital era, they need to focus on their, uh, and try to engage their followers and all that, try to engage them and build, uh, build their following. Because uh, a, career, a football career is always short, then what happens once you can't play anymore? Prudent financial management, because you, um, as an agency, there is definitely a cut. How much do you ensure that you educate them about this? Eventually, it may come down to personal choices, but how much education are you giving these people? Because for most of the people in the country, financial education came late or through you know, harsh, les harsh lessons. We always uh, try to uh, tell them, and even others, we always to the, uh, go to the extent of trying to manage the social medias, especially the, the ones that, that in Europe, we tell them oh, you're not supposed to post this. Even uh, in the, at, 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 at club levels, they are taught that uh, how you're supposed to manage your, your image. Because uh, as long as you sign a contract with a specific club in Europe, eh, that means now you represent that club brand. So how you behave, how you just walk around means that uh, you're representing the image of the club. So that's one thing that we always try to make sure that we protect, especially the players that are playing abroad. Now, for the youngsters and the coaches who are there, in this country we have always had this thing of shortcuts. It's become a national habit. If you try to do things the right way, however painful it is, they tell you you are complicating things. So... What's the way forward for sport in the country? If Kenya is to excel in football, um, I always say it's almost the last time we had third, uh, we could have two national teams that were totally complete and could compete anywhere in Africa was 30 years ago. What's required to be done to get to that level? Uh, I think probably this will be a conversation for another day, but I'll say we need to start working things from uh, up when I mean up from the ministry, because what does the law say? Our Sports Act 2013, because it just focuses from uh, the, the ministry, the federation, but it doesn't focus on uh, the activities. It doesn't protect the player. Uh, what are the activities that goes down below the federation? Uh, because I would say bring back the, the game to the community. That's where it belongs. That's where the activities are happening. But do we have a law that's protecting the player from the community? Because mm -hmm. that way, if the ministry, we can have a sports act that's protecting the activities. Because in the activities, that's where we're creating employment. Uh -huh. And if we're not focusing on that, if the law is not clear, then for the Federation have no uh, rights because the law is not clear. Well, the first time, I mean, Nick, Kimanthi, yeah. I think you'll make very many enemies with lawyers because, or political analysts because they always say the law is clear. But in your case, it is not clear. Well, yeah. Nick Kimanthi, he is the CEO of a total sports management agency. Eric Marcelo is one of their, you know, the players in their stable. And more will be going out there. Thank you very much for your time this morning and giving us insights into how, you know, a player should be managed and the coaching and the use of technology and why it's important that honesty and integrity are maintained in sport. We'll be taking a short break and when we get back, let's talk about the Confederation of African Football. There was a change of guard after the elective congress that took place in Rabat, Morocco on Friday and also on Saturday an appointment was made in regard to the general secretary of that confederation. What's the way next? for African football, and also the stories of the Harambe stars coming up next with Hubbard Mwachiro.